I have a question for you. Are you thinking about buying a new home? Are you thinking about buying new construction? Going in, There's so many of them out there, aren't there? This is Denise Lawler. I'm with Charles Ruttenberg Realty in Orlando. And I am here to enlighten you on a few things about builders. But today, I just want to kind of quickly go over the builder contract. First, I would like to say this. When you purchase a used home as opposed to a new home, uh, the used home will have the FAR bar contract, which was written by the Florida Bar Association and the Association of Realtors. So it's a fair and balanced contract. It's there to make sure both sides are represented fairly and it will protect both sides. The builder's contract is written by the builder's attorney. <laughs> so just know going in that it is not there to protect you. Although there is a couple of places where you can opt out and get your deposit back. But by, by and large, you are entering into a business relationship with that builder. So be sure to understand this and read your contract. A lot of there, a lot of them are really long. I worked for one builder, it was a hundred pages long with the addendums and the this. I mean, it was just a hundred pages. And then I've just started, I worked for a builder, it was like 56 pages, like half the size. So it just depends on who you're buying from. So let me make my screen smaller here and I'm going to bring up my contract. I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going to probably go away here in a second, but I don't know why that's happening, but it is. Anyway, so here we have the contract. This Now, this contract is a few years old, so uh, bear with me here. There, there probably have been some things added to this contract. They never, re they never take things out. So there are things in this contract from the great recession okay so here you have this is of course your your uh your uh your legal jargon up here legal here's all your information right and then here would be the the legal description of the property and all that good stuff so you're buying you know what you're buying the correct property uh total purchase price is going to be here uh, this includes your lot premium in this particular contract. Some of them will have it out to the side and you can see it broken down. Now, this is your initial deposit. Now, this can range uh, anywhere from $2,500 to 30% uh, of the contract. So it just depends if you're getting an FHA loan, FHA loan VA loan, uh, if you're paying cash, that kind of thing. Now, if it says 2,500, typically that's just an initial deposit. It's not the full deposit. And there will be an addendum that will say that you owe another X amount of dollars and they are due at this date. You know, it'll have the date in there. Now down here, of course, they give you this little, hey, watch out, this is a legally binding contract. Make sure you read it. Uh, here is under financing. Uh, you have cash transaction and you have mortgage transaction. Now the cash transaction, uh, you have to provide proof of funds that you have the cash in your bank account to pay for this property, or it can be a letter from your CPA or your bank or whoever saying that you have the amount of money to pay X amount of dollars for this property in your bank. So uh, this is a situation where I've seen builders ask for anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 percent deposit so uh, this is important to know uh, especially if it's you're not going to be closing for a while you uh, I always suggest that people finance if it's more than you know a couple of months away from the home closing mainly because you're tying up 10 to 30 percent of your money for a very long time and uh, they can only keep up to 15% of your money if it's over 15% if, you know, you default. So it's something you need to know. There's lots of places you can default in this contract. So this is a cash transaction again. And uh, if you 
for a builder, I, I want to say this too, for a builder, they don't care if you're cash or financing, if it's a few months out, because to them it's cash. Anyway, they're going to get cash from the bank. They don't, they're not financing you. So, you know, cash is not king really, unless the home can close in 30 to 60 days, then that's good for the builder. They can, uh, get that thing closed and off their books sooner. So, and this is a place too, where I would try to negotiate a little bit. Okay. We can talk about negotiating in another video, uh, mortgage transaction. Now you have five calendar days. Everything is a calendar day. It is not business days. So you have five calendar days. If it's a Friday afternoon, when you sign this thing, you better be on the phone to your your mortgage lender or to their mortgage lender, which I always suggest people use mainly because they're a lot more flexible. If the closing is postponed because of a mortgage issue, uh, you know, and they do have penalties. If you do not close on time, not the, the uh, lender, but the builder will. So they're a little bit more flexible when you use their people and you get an incentive. So why not? Okay, so five calendar days, then you have 30 calendar, 30 calendar days to get your pre-approval. So if uh, for some reason you cannot be approved, you thought you could, but you can't, you're not approved through their lender or even through your own lender, uh, some builders will uh, tell you you have to go through their builder, their, their lender first. Okay, you can't just go to your lender, even if you have a pre-approval letter. Uh, they'll want you to go through theirs just so they can know that you can qualify. So that's something to be aware of. And uh, so you have the 30 days. If for something happens and you cannot be approved, this is where you can get your deposit back. You get the letter and you turn it in. You've signed a cancellation form and uh, you can be uh, let out of the agreement. Okay. Uh, over here, this is just them saying that, you know, you're not going to buy a new car and throw your, your uh, DTI off your debt to income ratios. You're not going to do something that is going to put your ability to not qualify. So if you went out and you bought a car and it disqualified you from being approved in that 30 days, you will not get your deposit back in that situation. Okay. Appraisal. Now this is a holdover from the great recession when all the values started to plummet and during the uh while we were recovering from the recession appraisals were all over the place i mean you know it was it was really hard because they were, they were all they had was reos and short sales and things like that to compare them to so this uh pretty much says that it is up to the seller or the builder uh how they're going to react to that they are either going to go ahead and lower the price or they're going to negotiate with you again or they're going to just say bring the money to the table so it, i have seen it go both ways uh typically if it's not a big difference in price they will either negotiate or they will just adjust the price but if it's a fairly decent amount say you know ten twenty thousand dollars they will want you to bring the money to the table. So over here, um, okay, so this is, you know, they want, here's the thing at this part. And I've gotten different answers on this when I've asked management about it. But the the law is that you get 48 hours to, to look over your, your closing uh, statement, your HUD statement. So they have to provide it to you at least 48 hours before closing. So if they bring it down to the wire and they just give it to you 48 hours before closing, but they want you to, they want your money at least five business days prior to closing. So you have to wire your money before you actually see the HUD. Uh, they will give you some sort of estimated price or something like that. They will round it up. They will make it more than what it probably will be. And uh, so that you can at least have the amount. And then of course you're credited with that at closing, but you don't get to, you're already sending your money there before you know how much it is. And if you agree with everything on the HUD statement. So this is a little bit of a, 
a thing that I never could quite understand. And I understood that when, you know, foreign nationals, it might take longer. There might be a problem going through Canada or something like that with the money and they may not get there on time, but you know, for locals, for domestic wires, I mean, they get it the same day. So I, this is just something that's in there. Okay. Closing date. They pick the closing date. Okay. So you don't pick the closing date. You can't say, well, okay, the home's going to be ready May 27th, but you know, we're on vacation and you know, we're, we'll be back sometime in the middle of June. Well, no, that's not going to work. They, they pick the closing date. They're supposed to give you enough advanced uh, notice that you're going to close on such and such date. And now I've seen that everywhere, anywhere from six weeks notice to two weeks notice. So again, it depends on not only the builder, to be honest with you, but also who's in charge of that division and what the culture is. So, you know, you have to be really cognizant of the fact that they are going to pick the closing day. You are not, and you have to make yourself available. Uh, they may, the next thing is the completion date, which kind of goes hand in hand with this. Uh, they can only estimate, and then they could, there could be delays because of anything, the shortage of concrete, the changing of uh, subcontractors. I mean, it could be anything that could delay your construction completion. And they, they, they have up to two years to build your home. So they get a lot of leeway and you just have to roll with the punches here. Okay. So, so they have to, you have to keep your, your phone number, your email, everything, any, your address, anything that they can use to communicate with you up to date. If anything changes, you have to let them know because they will let you know that they're moving the date and they're not responsible if you've changed your email address. Now, I know some of you are probably looking at this and saying, oh, wait a minute, $300 a day and 1%. This particular builder was very numbers oriented. They were very much about getting their numbers in at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, and definitely the end of the year. So if you, if they schedule the closing and then you go to them and say, well, we post, we did our vacation for, you know, the next week, we were supposed to close two weeks earlier. And now you're closing me two weeks later. And that's right in the middle of our vacation. And they're going to be like, well, so bad, too bad, so sad, you know, read your contract. Uh, and if you want us to move it, it's going to be $300 a day. Now, if it goes into the next month, it's even worse, right? I said they want, they have numbers to meet at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, and they will charge you 1% of the purchase price. Now I have seen even this builder has done one or the other, but not both. I've not, I never saw them do both, you know, where you go over the to the next month and then they charge you 1% in addition to the $300 per day, but they can do anything they want. They can make it a combination. They could not do it at all. <laughs> it just depends. So make sure that you are really cognizant of the fact of your closing date and make sure you do not schedule something uh, that is going to put you in a predicament like that. Okay. Uh, they will postpone the closing date with no damages to you. They call it damages. They do not call it a, a charge or a fine or whatever you want to call it. They call it damages because they've been damaged. Okay. You made them wait and it's costing them money every day to keep this finished home on the market. And uh, so, but they will, if there is a problem with the loan, you know, the Consumer Protection Bureau's TILA, RESPA, okay, that's what it says. So you want to, that's your only way out of that one. Okay, again, the completion date, they have two years, okay. And that came in handy during the uh, COVID and all that, those issues that we had. Uh, because they, some, it was taking 18 months to close, okay. Casually before closing, they will of course, repair or replace the home if there's any issues. Uh, and the now the only way that, now here's another thing, okay, say they can't provide a marketable insurable title for closing. They have up to 120 days to do it without any penalty. They don't have to pay for your mover or your any of your inconveniences uh, if you have to wait for that title. So, and if they can never uh, get, provide a clear title, then of course you get your money back. Uh, the closing costs, I want to just say this, this is the end of the, 
of the line here. Uh, it gets into a lot of mumbo jumbo after this, but the closing costs, understand this, there are uh, typical and traditional closing costs that uh, go to the buyer side and to the seller side. So when you purchase a resale home, that is the way it is broken down on the HUD. Okay, you have you you would be paying for um, your deeds on your doc stamps on the deed and on the mortgage. Uh, the seller would be giving you clear title, so they would pay for title insurance. Uh, but with a builder, what they do is they take every dollar of closing costs and put it on your side. And then they give you that incentive money as a credit. So if, you know, unless they're paying all of your closing costs, and when they say we're, we're going to pay all your closing costs, it's up to a certain amount. It's not going to be everything. Uh, so that is pretty much it. Uh, that's probably why you want to have some sort of uh, incentive. You don't want to, uh, you know, be left holding the entire bag. So whoop, let me see, get me big again. There I am. So uh, I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, this is uh, a, a, an area that I am very well versed in. I have been explaining these contracts to buyers for 10 of my last 20 years in this business. And uh, I hope that that was helpful for you. Uh, I want to take to this time now to say that my next video will be about negotiating. Like, how can you negotiate with a builder? And when should you negotiate with a builder? So uh, tune in for that. And uh, if you have any questions, just contact me at uh, Denise. Uh, Denise at denisewallerhomes.com and most of you have my my phone number so call me and I'm here to help uh, so just let me know how I can help you have a great day thanks for watching